on Brene Brown's podcast about slavery and Black Lives Matter this week, Joe Biden asserted that America, the nation that's led the world in freedom and has lifted more people out of poverty and oppression than any other country on the planet, has always simply been the idea that all men are created equal and that we've never lived up to that. That's what the Democratic candidate for president of the United States thinks about a nation that tore itself apart to overcome slavery, offers the most generous immigration system in the world, has bled to bring freedom to oppressed people across the globe, affords anyone an opportunity to succeed, and not too long ago put a black man in the White House as the leader of the free world. That we've never lived up to the idea that all men are created equal. And if you believe that riff, you have to be blind or an idiot to miss the millions of Americans who live up to that principle every single day. The left might not see you, but I do. So despite our success as the freest and most prosperous nation on the planet, America has apparently never lived up to the idea that all men are created equal, or at least that's what Joe Biden thinks of us. Here's what he says. America was an idea, an idea. We hold these truths to be self-evident. We've never lived up to it, but we've never walked away from it before. And I just think we have to be more honest and let our kids know as we raise them what actually did happen. Acknowledge our mistakes so we don't repeat them. An idea that we never lived up to? An idea? Really? So the United States, which gives upwards of 50 billion a year in foreign aid to other countries, which spearheaded many of the major innovations that have lifted people out of poverty and starvation and despair across the world, which has given people electricity and transportation and modern food production, we've basically just been one giant whopping disappointment. So the 2,000 or so US soldiers who died taking Omaha Beach to fight tyranny and liberate a country full of strangers, they weren't living up to the idea that all men are created equal? The men and women who've died holding back terrorism so the rest of the world can go about their daily lives in peace. The police officers and firefighters and first responders who rushed into the Twin Towers while everyone else was running out. Maybe the cops who leave their homes and their families and go out every single day to protect perfect strangers of every color, who run towards shootings and fires and human trafficking nightmares to protect strangers they've never met because they believe that other people are worth risking their own lives for. They don't meet this standard of selflessness and equity? Because that's awfully rich coming from a guy who's never been asked to do any of those things. Someone who recently told black people they ain't black if they don't vote for him. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Who eulogized former KKK organizer Robert Byrd at his funeral. For a lot of us, he was a friend, and he was a mentor, and he was a guide. And who supports an organization that targets black and brown children for mass extermination because their mothers are poor and desperate. I think you don't get nearly enough credit in Planned Parenthood. Heck of a resume there. So. While we're speaking of truths that are pretty self-evident, it's clearer than ever that the left cannot stand the United States of America. They want to rewrite our history to highlight all of our failures and erase our success, our strength, and our victories. They actively work to weaken our standing with one another and with the world. They will dredge up old history and wrongs that have already been righted. They'll ignore our progress and paint a picture of a hateful, backwards, racist country that has never been anything but an embarrassing failure. Why? Well, see, because their livelihoods depend on making as many people feel victimized as possible. It's why Democrat-led cities are still rotten landfills of poverty and despair, no matter how many of their politicians have come and gone throughout the decades, standing on their soapboxes and promising change. The only way you can convince people to vote for a government that promises to help them is if you first make sure that they're in need of helping and that they believe they cannot help themselves that they're always being unfairly oppressed and that they need big government to come in and save them. The whole house of cards here is built on a foundation of victimhood. America cannot be allowed to succeed. Its people cannot be allowed to succeed because if they do, there would be no use for the leftists in Washington who promise everything under the sun. And why would they put themselves out of a job? The poor can't be allowed to become financially independent because then why would they need government programs? or the people who get rich running them. Women can't be allowed to learn that they can have their baby and achieve their dreams because why would they then need Planned Parenthood and the politicians who run on it? 
And we can't be allowed to move past racism because then minorities would have no use for the leftists who use it to stoke fear and anger for votes. See, for big government to keep and grow its power, your face has to forever stay in the mud. They'll tell you that if you'll only vote for them, they'll help you up, and then they never do because there will always be another election. Freedom is always the greatest threat to tyrants, but it only works if you know that you are free and if you want to stay that way because you believe you can run your life better than a politician can. And to believe that, you have to know history. America is not an idea. It's the greatest success story in the history of the world. It's the story of immigrants and innovators, of people who came from nothing and built an empire, who went from feeding their own families to feeding the world of people who looked at the sky and decided that that wasn't good enough so they went to the moon. It's the story of heroes who've died so that strangers could live and oppressed peoples could be free. One that recognizes the mistakes of our ancestors, but we don't live there. We resolve to do better, and we have. We're the story of kids who grew up in the projects but now play to packed out crowds in massive arenas. Many people alive today remember a time when a black man and a white woman couldn't even be seen out together in public. But you know, four years ago, I personally danced at an interracial couple's wedding and we're about to celebrate the birth of their first child. America is the story of millions of people who live and drive and work and socialize and worship alongside people of every imaginable color and creed and don't think twice about it, even though it was less than 60 years ago that we were all using separate water fountains. And that is incredible. America is the story of how black people rose from cotton fields all the way to the White House in the span of about five generations. Because regardless of your skin color, there is nothing the people of this country cannot do. America is more than an idea. It's proof that anyone can succeed here and that a free people are unstoppable. And millions of Americans live up to that every single day. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there.